right. Welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today in the show, we have Faith Coleman. She is a family physician and she wrote the Kevin MD article, Physicians and the Importance of Servant Leadership. Faith, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. We'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and journey to where you are today? You know, when you get to have this many years thrown together, there's too much <laughs> to tell. You don't know where to start, but you know, there were a number. You know, I at one time looked at psychiatry and another I looked at um, surgery, and it was serendipitously how I ended up in family medicine and found out, found out that it's the right place for me. So um, I worked in uh, hospital loan practices. I've been on the faculty of the family medicine residency in a few med schools and really enjoyed the academic stuff. But since about 2012, I've been uh, gone back to journalism full time. So I'm writing articles, uh, preparing manuscripts, writing material for med students to study, to prepare for their boards and you know, all the material for docs who want to recertify in their specialties. And there's a lot of that stuff out there. And I, I can get more work that I can do. So I'm always interested in hearing what physicians are doing outside of the exam room. So tell me a little bit more about your writing career and exactly what kind of things um, are you writing? Well, I got my bachelor's in journalism. And you probably remember the medical economics company they put up. Mm -hmm. I went to work for them when I finished my um, bachelor's. And I, I knew all the time I was planning on going to med school. And there's things work together just exactly a fit. And that year, it just so happened that year, medical economics was having a national essay contest to, for, to choose their interns for the summer. And it was, so I wrote an essay and so I was awarded that and did that. And, you know, the, I, but I always planned to go to med school. So that's what I did. I wasn't doing much journalism or writing during med school or for the first few years, but um, I went back to it, starting with selling pieces about um, parenting and then quickly a physician who wants to write can pick up you know, a ton of work with, I do a lot of the um, content that a uh, site uses to launch its site, you know, like the first 50 articles, first 100 articles and that kind of thing. But let me ask you, for those physicians who are interested in writing, how do they go about finding these opportunities? Very easy to find. And I wouldn't necessarily um, recommend the way I did it. But um, there are more writing companies than there should be. Everyone's trying to turn that into a business. And I, I, I did have good results though from the one I signed up with, which was called Upwork. And uh, the people who want writers will go on there. They post their job. Um, you explain who you are, why you're good for them, um, and bid on their job. And then I was real fortunate that I, I was selected for most of the jobs that I um, bid on. But after two or three years, you know, I'd had enough of that and the, and the constraints and all and could see that it really, it wasn't necessary to do that anymore. So, but you can go on um, Indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good for finding jobs. You know, and recently I've been looking at work for the St. Jude's Children's Hospital is on there. Um, NBC <laughs> at one time was looking for docs to have either writing for the show or being on the show. You can put in medical writers and you'll start getting things. And it, it takes a while to kind of have well, like, I guess it's like being an intern. You don't know what you're doing the first few weeks, but then you kind of get the hang of it and, and start doing that. So you can go where to um, uh, put in medical writers, medical editors, put together a good CV, ask for help <laughs> with that from one of the companies that does uh, resumes and gives advice, which is usually free. Um, 
and write a few things that you can have in a portfolio for other people to look at and keep, keep trying. I think I feel especially fortunate that because, you know, my education and, and the demand for it, I can get some of the premium jobs. So any your other listeners or, or readers or whoever would be able to do that too. Now, is writing on the side as a physician, can that be a legitimate source of income? Definitely. And for my first few jobs, I took very low pay. I had to have something to put in a portfolio. But after that, it was just within months that I could, you know, get the, the piece I was writing for. One of my first one was a research advocacy company wanted a white paper about the uh, Physician Sunshine Act. And so I bid $800. I won asked for $800 to do that, and they decided to do it. So, um, and that was, you know, a few pages worth of work. So at, at times you reach a point where you want to ask for more because it looks funny if you don't, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you have all these credentials. So, you know, you can start with $10 an article and, and go up to, right now the, I'm working for um, Healthline, Mm-hmm. They, the Healthline Media and taking um, research articles and turning them into things that people can read and get something out of. And that's $200 for about seven or 800 words. Right. So it can, even in a few hours a week, it makes a difference. All right, let's turn to the Kevin MD article that you had published and is titled Physicians and the Importance of Servant Leadership. Now, for those who didn't get a chance to read the article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it? This hospital recruiting site asked me to write something to the um, graduating residents who were Mm -hmm. looking forward to finally getting into practice. And this is what I came up with. And I guess it's kind of my, the way I lean anyway. So it's a letter to residents as they're graduating you know, with some encouragement, and I still think medicine is a great thing to do. And I think you can still find a lot of sat- satisfaction there when you teach yourself to see it more often. And, you know, I, I could never have imagined that medicine would be something that I would think of leaving. But once the um, electronic health records came in, you know, I was using one of the first systems. What a nightmare. <laughs> and and it's taken over so much more life now. But it's just, I wanted to share with them these little bits that can accommodate or, or fill, f- fulfill you even while you um, are having to conform to all the rigorous regulations and, you know, those sort of things. So I, I put in some guidance in there. And it was about being a servant which I think was, is the key to, to really being fulfilled in it. So go into more detail. What does servant leadership mean to you? When I decided to go to med school, I, I knew, I didn't know how to articulate it, but I knew it was about being a servant. So I, I've taken that posture towards it. And I think that that's really need to be very grateful to, for the brains they were born with. <laughs> you know, you can look around in the world and, and you know, like I was walking through the, the nation's greatest retailer uh, one day and there were their employees were there and I heard them talking and their definition of you know, their ship coming in is getting on at that retailer so that they can have medical insurance for their family. And, you know, the I didn't know how they managed to be in such good spirits all the time, Um, but they do. And those people are the ones who are really turning the world. And it's not by my doing that I was given a brain, you know, or the Constitution that would be able to do this. So I I can't take credit for that. But, yeah, it occurred to me a few times that it might be good to schedule medical students to do a stint as a new um, employee at, at that uh, 
retailer, but I'm not sure everybody would get what I really would hope they would get out of it. It is, it is definitely a privilege to, to be able to do this despite all the constraints. Um, so, you know, my thing was um, the possibility of a physician shortage and uh, permissive pessimism seems to be the way to look at medicine. And, and I just don't want to believe that. So I was encouraging um, the readers that they could thrive, not just survive. There's so much pressure on clinicians and other healthcare professionals, especially during the pandemic. What kind of advice can you give to these healthcare professionals to maintain that idealism, to continue becoming servant leaders in the face of everything and that they're facing today and all the hardships that they have to experience um, in medicine today? One of the first questions I'll often ask someone or, or did when I was doing clinical work, what do you like to do for fun? And it gets the conversation started. And so it, it's a good way to start looking at the patients as being human. And, you know, and I see that's one of my partners. When he went in the room with his patients, I can say this because I told him, you know, <laughs> so he, this is not a surprise to him. Um, but when he went into the room with the patient, he wasn't really in the room. And so as he's, you know, walking in, he's trying to walk back out again mm -hmm. and just didn't find any, any joy in that. He was in his mid thirties at that time. And I thought, oh Lord, how do you go on doing this for 20 more years? with, you know, hating it, but he felt trapped too, because he wanted, you know, a big mansion and, and all those kind of things that um, a, a lot of money can, can buy, but it's really in touching people. And, you know, I, I asked my patients, you know, why, why does this work? What, what's your opinion of me? Am I giving you good care? And the, the one thing, I mean, some feel self-serving, Kevin, but the first thing almost to a person they said was, you care. And that, that goes a long way. Like one of the quotes I used in this article is John Maxwell. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And there's a lot of truth in that. And despite all the technology, it's the human part that's healing too. They need to come into the office. I don't know if this telehealth stuff is as good as people are, or as frequently it's, or maybe it's being done more than it should be. Um, there's a difference in being face to face and, and you can't substitute it. We're talking to Faith Coleman. She's a family physician and she wrote the Kevin Emmy article, Physicians and the Importance of Servant Leadership. Faith, as you reflect back on your medical career, what are some pieces of advice and take-home messages that you would like to leave with my clinician audience? Give. Faith, Thanks. thank you so much for spending time with me and sharing your time and insight. Thanks again for being on the show. Thank you much. Thank you.